Department. This film is now made to mark 10 years since the National Maritime Authority came into being. We shall hear and see her particular achievements in 10 years and monitor feedback from the maritime community. Well, uh, Nigeria, we don't, we don't have a long international maritime tradition. We have our own domestic people doing the little river ride ship and all that. So we need bodies like enemy. Without them, we, we cannot be strengthened because remember, the, the, uh, those in the world have had hundreds of years of start before us. So we need the jump start from enemy. I am sure we'll be losing a lot because there's nobody to speak on our behalf. And uh, there's no, no regulatory body that we can run to when we are in distress. That is without the enemy. Without the enemy. Because there was a ship owner that refused to pay us for our services. And after a protracted period of asking for our money, faxing, telexing, threats, they didn't answer us until we now told them we're going to report them to National Maritime Authority and their lawyers will take it up with them from London. And immediately they sent us a check. NMA, of course, would continue to have a very important role to play in the development of Nigerian shipping for the simple reason uh, that shipping is not uh, an activity which can really be determined purely by commercial factors per se. It is um, an activity that has very international dimensions. It straddles international boundaries. It straddles international laws. And for that reason, you see, the factor of politics then comes into play. So in terms of uh, the political assistance that one might require in facilitating the uh, growth and development of Nigerian shipping, this is the precise area that uh, the NMA really would have a great role to play. In 1992, the National Maritime Authority addressed itself to the acquisition of ocean-going vessels under Nigerian registration and control. Many shipping lines eagerly applied to these chances for loans thrown open by the National Maritime Authority. The arrangement was organized under the Ship Acquisition and Ship Bidding Fund in conjunction with the Federal Minister of Transport and the Federal Minister of Finance. But the bulk of processing these applications fell to the staff of National Maritime Authority. Uh, one would want to say at this stage that uh, the National Maritime Authority had come a long way. Of course, it had its teeth in problems within those formative 10 years of its existence. And uh, uh, it was not easy uh, sailing the statutory objectives uh, of this organization to practitioners in that uh, industry because we, we, some of our statutory roles uh, in effect tried to stop some of the malpractice, malpractices uh, of those who tend to cut short corners uh, within the industry. And this was the reason why government thought it uh, wise to follow uh, international uh, uh, conventions by setting this organization. So far, I would say the NMA had tried. It is best to establish itself uh, as a regulator of the national maritime industry. But of course, there still leaves a lot to be done. By far the biggest success story of the ship acquisition and ship bidding fund. The establishment from scratch of a new shipping line bankrolled by the government. The new company, called the Nigeria Unity Line, cost the NMA fund over 40 million US dollars to float this company, complete with a fairly new ship. MV Abuja. It was due to the agreement under the chairmanship of Mr. Wawashilipu that the ship acquisition and ship building plan was introduced. The head of state and commander in chief of the armed forces, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, were all gathered here together for the commission ceremony of MV Abuja belonging to the Nigeria Unity Band. We may wish to recall that it was the excellent the first lady, Ajayamara Abacha, 
West Coast Marine Services is one of the beneficiaries of NMS Ship Acquisition Fund. The company today maintains a steady schedule of selling the ECOWAS route with newly acquired versus ECOWAS traders, purchased with loans from the Ship Acquisition Fund. Um, here I would say we have three vessels, and uh, we acquired one before we got a loan from NMS. That is the uh, ECOWAS trader one. The 2,500 dead weight. And uh, after that, we got the loan from NME and bought uh, Coas Trader 2, which is um, 3,619 dead weight. Uh, the third one, of course, is a specialized ship, is a training ship, and is uh, 1,024 1, DRT. All the ships are dry cargo ships, apart from the training ship, and uh, they carry general cargo container, etc. How about this? What routes do you sell, and how has it improved Nigeria's maritime uh, I would say we are contributing our own quota. I mean, initially we concentrated in the West African sub-region, and of course, occasionally. Uh, of cargo was to go to Europe and all over the world. So I do congratulate uh, the Honorable Minister for the mere fact that he's a khaki man. It's not a, it's not a merchant man, but he has grabbed so much within the industry that I think I will give him the pass mark. And for National Maritime Authority, uh, they said the Cray brought Maritime Authority into bay. There has been ons and offs in the industry. And uh, I, I will give them a pass mark, but we still have a lot to do together. Because when you talk of a private ship owner, I'm for sure, or our own company, East West Coast Marine Services, knows that we're not going to be spoon fed by National Maritime Authority. Because a lot of shipping companies expect Maritime Authority to perform magic. Shipping is international. It's not within Nigeria, it's not within Lagos and Port Harcourt. You have to go out and fight for it. And whatever you get from National Maritime Authority, which they are doing their best, is to supplement. For Genesis Worldwide Shipping, NMS Ship Acquisition Fund has facilitated the outright purchase of their first vessel, Genesis Pioneer One. The assistance of the NMA actually transformed this shipping line to a high-profile company, resulting in their quick progress to acquire a second vessel in the space of one year. Well, you would be surprised to know that we actually have a total uh, deployed tonnage of 29,000 deadweight tons. And um, funny as it may sound, we are actually one of the largest private sector ship owners in Nigeria. As you may well know also, we started about a year and a half ago um, when we bought the uh, Genesis Pioneer, which was a 15,000 ton deadweight ship. And that vessel is now deployed uh, in the competition in the international tra Trump uh, trades, which means essentially um, that it trades worldwide. It uh, follows their cargo wherever we can find the opportunities to lift them. And we have since then progressed from that uh, initial modest uh, uh, start, and we have uh, acquired another vessel which we uh, named the Genesis Challenger, which is a 14,000 deadweight uh, vessel. So in total, we have 29,000 deadweights. And in terms of what we have achieved for Nigerian shipping, I will tell you, we are participating fully in the international business of shipping. We are also there to project Nigeria's image, positive image of Nigeria. You would know, of course, that Nigeria has been in the news uh, recently for um, reasons that are less than fully flattering and we think it's also uh, important that we through the activities that we engage in 
that we tell the whole world that there are parts of Nigeria also that it has nothing to do with politics, that we tell people that there are uh, efficient managers, technicians, engineers who can ma uh, master the complex business of um, the logistics of uh, organizing uh, international shipping. Another shipping line which obtained NMS help is A and C Engineering and Marine Services Limited. For them, the ship acquisition fund translated into vigorous business. Starting first as a ship repair outfit, Air and Sea Engineering used the NMA loan to acquire a passenger vessel with capacity of 400 passengers now operating in Central Africa. They've assisted a lot of um, indigenous shipping companies and uh, especially Air and Sea as well. You know, we have uh, benefited so much from you know the last. Uh, uh, from their achievements. Um, you know, we, we definitely wish to congratulate them and uh, we wish uh, the Director General and uh, the management and staff of uh, NMA all the best and uh, we wish them happy 10th anniversary. NMA has grown up to become a very visible institution in the country. Um, obviously, we will seize upon you also to thank the Ministry of Transport in this uh, indigenous, uh, indigenous um, achievement because uh, um, uh, without the Ministry of Transport, maybe you know, we wouldn't have uh, gone this far. Uh, what we would like them to do, really, being the custodian of the shipping policy in the country, we would like them to actively encourage the participation of Nigerian ship owners in cargo acquisition and uh, also uh, to assist uh, the shipping community with soft loans you know, so that uh, with a great nation like this we can compete actively in the shipping world. Of all the 10 benefiting shipping lines, bulk ship is one of the major bulk non-liner carriers in the list. They have been regular ship owners since 1988 when they bought MV Inawakili. But their reputation as a major player in the maritime community also comes from heavy chartering of their operating tonnage. Established in 1985, this is a free tramping company in bulk wet and dry cargoes. Their loan from NMA is being invested in a large ship named MV Yola, their largest owned vessel so far. We are happy for, for NMA and, the, and the also the federal government because uh, uh, when our loan was uh, approved, it was uh, not only done by NMA but also by the presidency, you know, that time. And we are happy with the with the NMA and also the government uh, in particular. And we have now acquired a very sound vessel of about 6,500 tons, tana, but a capacity of 8,500. Uh, and uh, we have named her MV Yola, and uh, she has already started. Uh, The second priority in the national shipping policy, the improvement of Nigeria's share of freight revenue generated by national economy. Shipping lines from the advanced nations usually dominate the market, but the national shipping policy intends to implement the international shipping codes for dry cargoes to favor Nigeria and to assist Nigerian companies to begin the lifting of petroleum products locally and abroad. The status report is that Nigeria accounts for over 60% of seaborne trade covering West and Central Africa in dry goods. For wet cargoes alone, Nigeria's economy generates about $1 billion annually for affrightment charges. Of this sum, Nigerian companies ought to earn 50% or about 500 million US dollars. Yet, the major product in this category, petroleum tanker trade, is yet to be open to Nigerian shipping companies as federal laws stipulate, even though their campaign for it has been strong. Yet, they rejoice with the NMA on this 10th anniversary, only in very much hope. On the 10th anniversary of the National Maritime Authority, I would like to
congratulate the enemy on this occasion. The enemy has succeeded in creating and generating revenue for government. But the indigenous shipping lines are yet to enjoy the full potential and benefits yeah. which NMA could achieve. Yeah. So far, the NMA has created awareness on Nigerians of its existence. And of course, with uh, the introduction of the from C31, uh, indigenous shipping lines could locate existence of cargo. But there's still a lot to be done by the NMA. They are now 10 years old. Yes. It means they're maturing, they're growing, they're getting stronger, and they're now better able to manage what I would call our maritime resources in, in terms of the natural ones, the human ones, the financial ones. So I, I've, I've watched NMA grow in that sense from strength to strength, and I think they deserve a good congratulations. They've managed 10 years, and they're growing. Some people can grow and not mature, but they are maturing. <laughs> Yes, of course. Me and the entire members of Hamstein Shipping Company congratulate National Maritime Authority on their 10th anniversary. We wish them many more years of success in putting Nigeria in the maritime industry worldwide. Uh, I'm glad uh, to say that uh, so far our efforts have started yielding results because we are now at this third stage uh, on this issue. First, we had to persuade the NNPC and agency of government like ourselves to accept in principles what has been uh, our statutory responsibility and uh, part of our law which says at least uh, fifty percent of Nigeria's crude oil must be lifted uh, by Nigerian indigenous carriers. And also this NNPC sales contract also recognizes uh, 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 this part of our law. Uh, it is properly entrenched and seen in their sales agreement. And of course the United Nations Trade and Development Anchored, uh, an agency of the United Nations also had given leverage to every country in the world uh, to effectively partake in, 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 in the lifting of uh, nat their natural resources at least up to the 50% as enshrined in our uh, decree. With 10 years of national shipping policy, reviews of Nigerian shipping statistics call for additional vigor on the part of government. African countries as a whole own about 5.1% of total world fleet of ocean-going vessels. West and Central African national carrier fleet are too few, ill-equipped, and nearly too old to even carry their share of 40% cargoes generated by United Nations conventions. For Nigeria, more work definitely needs to be done. On. With NMS DG pursuing the involvement of Nigerian shipping lines in the lifting of crude oil and refined products, high level meetings have reportedly taken place with the NMPC and major oil producing companies. We asked the NMA chief executive if this indicates considerable chances of success in the nearest future for reputable shipping lines to lift crude oil. Uh, we have set up committees. The two organizations, that means NMA and NNPC, the committee had submitted its report. The report of the committee had now been formally presented to our two ministers. Uh, that is the Honorable Minister of Transport and uh, the Honorable Minister of Petroleum Resources. They are now looking into this, uh, uh, our, uh, the committee report uh, that worked on the modalities of how it is going to be uh, effected. After studying that, it would now be passed to the commander-in-chief uh, uh, for his uh, sanction. Once the commander-in-chief okays that document of modalities, because the law is already there, it is, no, it is not a new law that is going to be established, then Nigerians would smile. And I presume 
And uh, uh, we are working effectively towards that to see that at least before the end of this year, something positive comes up. I think any making help besides getting the cargo uh, in the ship acquisition, they should also try to um, uh, help the shipping companies in, uh, say, pay less tax, you know, uh, some incentives to the shipping lines to give them encouragement to, to, to grow better. Um, the issue of lifting crude, for instance, yes. um, at this stage of our national development, the indigenous shipping lines should be in position and are well positioned, in fact, to leave crude oil. Um, the NMA has to aggressively lobby both the government and the NMPC to achieve this end. Secondly, the ship acquisition fund is, needs to be reactivated to enable more companies to benefit from it. Thirdly, there's a lot of bureaucracy in the NMA, and uh, this needs to be streamlined to make it more effective.